Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So as usual, I'll show you where I, we are on the pattern. Working on the fountain still underneath the swans. And at the top of a new diagonal for the beginning of this session, so. Yeah, 93%. And uh, got to zero out like six colors since last session. So yeah, definitely getting lots of uh, little senses of accomplishments as we uh, we carry on here. I said end of the year, but I'm thinking probably end of November to early December is what it looks like. So I may even get to make a new start this year. So that'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we did go over and say hi to the new neighbors, had a nice chat with them for about half an hour. Uh, they, uh, yeah, they're not retired, but I think they're a little bit older than we are. And uh, they got a couple adorable little dogs. I think they were terriers. I'm not great on dog breeds, but yeah, they were really cute and very friendly. Not loud. They were, um, they were happy when we told them this is a pretty quiet street. So yeah, I think we will get along just fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice because although we live close to an elementary school, we're kind of a small section off of it that doesn't really connect to the main roads easily, so we don't get a lot of through traffic. Most of the traffic we get down this street is from people who actually live here, so yeah. Yeah, and uh, we usually don't have to give out a ton of, uh, of candy at uh, Halloween which is coming up almost immediately. Yeah, that pumpkin we bought, um, <laughs> at, I bought earlier in the month, it, uh, it's still alive. <laughs> so storing it in my uh, husband's garage was a good call because yeah, we have gone above and below freezing a few times in the last few weeks, so it would have rotted. Yeah, I had once after um, Halloween was done, and, uh, you know, I blew out the candle, left the pumpkin outside. And then um, the next day, I wanted to take the candle out so I could, you know, throw it in the compost. And the lid got frozen on. <laughs> so I ended up having to bring it in the house for a while. And then I, I heated up a butter knife under hot water. And finally, I was able to sort of wiggle that between the, uh, the lid and the body of the pumpkin and get it, get it apart. <laughs> <clears throat> I said I wouldn't have cared except, you know, there's the candle inside and <coughs> I don't want to throw that away and it can't be composted either. It's wax, so yeah. Or one year we used those um those fake tea lights that, you know, they're battery operated, but they look like the old style tea light. So yeah, it's plastic. You definitely don't want that going in the compost. That will not be good. Yeah, we had one year that the pumpkin outside, because um, we had a few temperature fluctuations, it was just like, you couldn't pick it up because it was rotting. And uh, so my husband actually had to um, get the snow shovel and um, push it underneath so he could carry the whole thing to the compost. It was quite funny. <laughs> yeah, if you tried, to, um, you tried to pick it up, your hands would just go right through it. So let me see where I am. Am I? Did I? Hmm. I think I may have misparked some stuff. Okay, so. Oh, no, maybe not. I just can't read. Yeah. Right. I was getting confused. Oh, no, there's something parked there that should not be. Yeah, I did mispark something. Yeah, this one here should actually be parked one stitch over from where it is. So I did miss part one. So I'm just gonna grab that other thread that's still at the back. 
repark this correctly. And then park this one correctly. Yeah, I don't want to try and bring this one up through that hole and then try to unpark the other one because I may snag it with this working thread and then, yeah, trying to fix it is um, not fun. Guess how I know I've done that before. <laughs> Ooh. So yeah, kiddo's big enough. He doesn't really, he doesn't go trick-or-treating anymore, but uh, he does get to wear his costume to, uh, to school. And uh, he's going to wear his uh, Yoshi onesie pajamas. Yeah, Yoshi's his favorite character, and plus, it's super comfortable. One year he actually went, um, not to school because it wouldn't have been practical, but when he went trick-or-treating, he went as um, Mario riding on Yoshi, like on in the, um, the Mario 64. Or not 64, no, no, no. Super, Nin Super Mario, the Super Nintendo. Yeah, I forgot. Mario 64 was the first 3D one, but he went as that. And uh, so, yeah, his legs were Yoshi's legs, and then they had fake Mario's legs and uh, yeah, it was an inflatable costume, so that's why he couldn't wear it to school. It would have been practical, but yeah, it was fun. He's too big for that costume now, but the pajamas still fit. So, because when I got them, they didn't have any kid size. They only had adult size. So, yeah, he's almost outgrown it because I bought the smallest adult size for him. Because when I bought it for him, he was like eight or nine. That was his uh. His Christmas gift one of his Christmas gifts that year so grabbing the wrong thread here there we go but yeah I'm amazed that thing has uh, worn like iron because there's still no holes in it and he's it's his favorite pajamas so he wears them a lot yeah I said in uh in 2020 when we were on you know quarantine lockdown um he wore nothing but pajamas <laughs> Oh, yeah, so it was funny when I did the laundry, his was all pajamas and not a single sock because he likes to go barefoot in the house. And since he wasn't going outside, he didn't need any. So, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I remember when that happened, I was thinking how lucky I was that, uh, you know, I like the people I'm quarantined with. It wasn't a hardship for me because I know it was for a lot of people who weren't in great situations. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then the other thing that happened, um, I ordered some uh, Star Trek shirts for my birthday earlier this month. I ordered them like beginning of the month thinking they'd arrive for my birthday. Nope, they finally arrived, you know, today, almost at the very end of the month, but I finally got them, so. Yeah, jokes, because one of them is red, says Starfleet Academy, established 2161, and oh, oh, I bought a red shirt, you know. And there's one that has Badgy from um, Lower Decks. And he's all, on the front of the shirt, he's all pleasant. It's all smiling. And may I teach you a lesson? And then on the back of the shirt, he's all evil Badgy. May I teach you a lesson with a big evil look on his face? It's quite funny. Okay, so these. And then there's this one. Mm-hmm. Just trying to decide where I want to carry each thread. Yeah, I don't buy a lot of new clothes these days. But I was like, you know what? For someone who's such a huge Star Trek fan, I should have some Star Trek shirts. <laughs> yeah, and that was my Halloween costume. I got a original series uniform. The blue one, because blue's my favorite. And I said, well, if I was in Starfleet, that's probably where I'd be in the sciences, so. Yeah, my husband is um, at work. They're doing, they're participating in the uh, trunk retreat, which is uh, raising money for um, 
a local charity. Can't remember which one, but uh, yeah, he had to go buy some uh, jeans and a flannel shirt because they're all supposed to dress as farmers. And he doesn't wear jeans, really. So <laughs> he didn't have any. So, But he said, ah, well, now I'll have something else to wear in the garage. He usually wears like the cargo work pants, but he said, well, I guess the jeans will be for that too. Yeah, it's funny. He always wears work pants and work boots pretty much. Like he finally bought some runners when we went on our trip this year because we were planning to hike a bit. And uh, yeah, like we've been together since 2001 and he hadn't even owned really a pair of uh, of runners since I'd, we'd been together. <laughs> so he just didn't wear them. He either wore, well, he was in the military, so he had combat boots, right? And work boots and then um, dress shoes. And he just, he isn't a jogger or anything. So he never really had a reason to, uh, to own runners. So. Yeah, we call them runners here in Canada. I know in US, you guys usually call them sneakers and in the UK, they call them trainers. It was funny one year, I actually did one of those, um, how many of these Canadianisms do you know? And I knew pretty much all of them. There was one or two I didn't know, but there was a few I knew that I didn't even know were considered Canadianisms. I thought they were just like 90s slang, like calling someone a hoser or a tool. They said was a Canadian thing. And I was like, really? I thought that was just a 90s thing. But yeah, like they said, um, like to give her or you're giving her, which means like to give her gas or to floor it, to go really fast, yeah. Yeah, there were the couple that I didn't knew were because they were um, East Coast things and I'm West Coast Canadian. The furthest I've been is Saskatchewan, the furthest East I've been, so. Yeah, my sister actually drove across the country the year after high school graduation, so. She said that was fun. Got to just so she could, you know, have done the experience. I said one day, maybe, maybe when we retire, we'll do that. Yeah, she said she made it to, I think it was Newfoundland. And apparently every year they will have huge icebergs that just drift on past. And she said, unfortunately, she arrived a couple weeks too late and missed it. She said, oh, because I remember I was... I saw a, an article about that and shared it. And she said, yeah, she, the locals had told her that she had just missed it. But yeah, like huge icebergs, like the size of, you know, buildings will just go by past. And it's really cold as they go past too, because they block the sun in a lot of places. And obviously they're ice, so there's cold air coming off them. So yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, I haven't traveled a lot. Only other place I've really been was um, Disneyland. Well, I went through Washington, but I didn't really stay there, obviously, because we were on our way to California in the end. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a big travel person. I like being at home. I think maybe one day I wouldn't mind maybe going to Europe touring some of the amazing uh, churches and old buildings there. But, uh, well, we'll probably go to Hungary because uh, my husband's family is from there and he still has family there. So maybe we'll go at some point and visit them. My, um, my in-laws went, oh, was it last year? Something, but in the last few years they went. So, yeah, they hadn't been back since they... Uh, they left in the 80s, so yeah, they said it was really nice to see everybody. Okay, we're going to use up some shorter pieces here. Yeah, the only problem is I don't speak any Hungarian. I tried, but I don't know. I'm not good at languages. Like, I studied French from like sixth grade until 11th grade and I'm still terrible at it. I can usually catch about a third of the words so enough to sort of get the gist of what someone's saying but speaking it I'm hopeless.
then I guess like my husband, you know, he was learning a second language when he was five, so. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny because I was having a discussion with somebody was saying if you could have, you know, like one kind of superpower or something, what would it be? And a lot of friends were saying um, invisibility, uh, teleportation. And I said fluency in any language. And so he said, oh, you know, I hadn't thought of that, but that's a good one. You know, I said, yeah, I, I wish that was a thing. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind again in Star Trek, the universal translator thing. That, that'd be nice if such a thing existed. Apparently, um, there was a device I saw um, through a mail order catalog that um, would go in your ear and it would translate what somebody was saying into another language. So I thought that's kind of cool. So it's sort of the beginning so you could pick, you know, it wasn't universal because it couldn't, it couldn't uh, do multiple, but you could order whatever you wanted out of, I think it was like a dozen different languages so you could order Russian being translated to French or, you know, that kind of thing. And it's pretty cool. And there was a special I watched on um, Star Trek that was saying, um, talking about, you know, is the, um, is the technology of uh, Star Trek like actually scientifically feasible? Obviously not possible yet, but like is such a thing and uh, they had one where they um, they had an app that had been made where it would scan the words in one language and display them on your screen in another. And they actually demonstrated it over a piece of paper that had, you know, like, hello, how are you in French? And then on the, on the uh, English, on your screen, it would say it in English, which was really cool. And they did one where they were showing sort of if you could refract light beams a certain way you could theoretically cloak something because they they did it but of course it was with a really simple object and only from like one angle but like they re way they refracted it with mirrors and stuff so that you couldn't see they put like a drinking glass in the center point and yeah you couldn't see that it was there which was like kind of neat so I said yeah I want my replicator you know I said maybe theoretically it's possible because like you can convert matter to energy right like you burn fuel create heat and stuff so since matter can't be created or destroyed could you theoretically do the reverse and turn energy into matter so but yeah i would sure like that i can tell you that <laughs> oh and then yesterday i was driving home and got a flat tire and it was funny because I was like, why is the car making this weird sound? And then when I would turn left, it would make this, it would feel weird. And so I pulled over and like, you know, looking at the undercarriage and stuff and shifting stuff in the round in the back and no, nothing's rattling around here. Like why? And then finally I came around to the passenger side and was like, oh, my tire's flat. That's why. And because um, my car has um, automatic, um, four by four so you don't manually switch it on it just kicks in when your car skids or whatever and because of that because the one tire was lower it was trying to kick in and it was making this <clears throat> making it kind of sh rattle and shake a bit so yeah my husband said good thing I noticed and pulled over because if I'd driven all the way home like that I probably would have wrecked it so yeah <clears throat> but yeah so I had to call him and be like help my tire's flat like I can I could change a tire in an emergency, but I'm not very strong, so it would be tough <laughs> to get those lug nuts loose. And uh... <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I said, oh, my hero. <laughs> yeah, he showed up and changed the tire for me. And yeah, I ran over a screw, I think in the parking lot at uh, my kid's school because um, they are uh, renovating right now. They're putting in a big, I think they're expanding the um, aud gymnasium auditorium area. area, And they're also um, gonna put in some new science labs and such. So it's gonna be really nice when it's done. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that probably 
I ran over some, a loose one in the parking lot from the, from the construction area, so don't. <laughs> there are actually two in there, but my husband thinks that it was a long screw and that I hit it and it broke off and then jammed into the wheel in two places, so. But fortunately, he took it to the tire place and they said it is fixable, so phew. Cause yeah, we bought those tires only a couple of years ago and I really didn't want to have to replace them yet. So, so thankfully it is fixable. Cause yeah, I had one time that I ran over a bolt at a gas station, I think was where I might've got it. And um, unfortunately the tire was worn down enough that it was on the verge of needing replacement. And so they couldn't patch it. So which sucked because we were hoping to get another six months out of it before we had to buy new tires, but yeah, that forced the issue and we had to buy new ones right then, so. Yeah, it's always something, right? Yeah, lucky my husband's work is pretty flexible. So I was able to call him and he came within, you know, 10 minutes to help me change my tire. It was close to the end of the day too, of course, because I uh, had uh, picked up kiddo from school. So he just took off early that day. <laughs> well, actually he came, he did that. And then he went to the, took the tire into the uh, tire place and then went back to work to do a couple more things. So. Yeah, it's like the third freaking flat I've had in five years. Like, come on. <laughs> it's funny, too, because, like, I drive way less than my husband. He has to drive for work, you know, and he's, he's, uh, he covers quite a big area, you know, and, uh, so he's on the road all the time. I'm basically just, you know, f uh, shuffling kiddo to and from school going to the grocery store, like, that's about it. And, uh, yeah, and yet he almost never gets a flat. I have the bad luck. I always seem to get one. Like, go figure. I said, the getting rear-ended, I get it, because I'm the one at the school more, and it's less experienced drivers and in a tight area, and, yeah, I've been rear-ended twice in the last uh, few years. <laughs> I had one in 2017 and then one last year. Fortunately, neither was bad enough to write off the vehicle, so. But yeah, they, they know us at the, because uh, I had a, uh, another, so I had two issues. The last time my husband went in to the uh, shop and they said, oh no, not again, right? And yeah, rear-ended again. And uh, yeah, my car's been, it's a Honda Element, so it's been discontinued for quite a while. I think they quit making them and well, mine is 09, and I think they quit making them in, like, 2010, maybe 12. But anyway, they haven't made them for at least 10 years. So, um, yeah, the last time they had to replace the back end from being rear-ended, they actually, I think, had to have it manufactured. They couldn't source one from a wrecker. So I was right on the borderline of being written off, so I was so glad that it wasn't actually written off. Because, yeah, I would have been... Not happy that it happened. Ah, we've had it since uh, 2013 and I'm quite attached to it, so. Okay. Yeah, it's funny. I don't really get attached to houses because when I was a kid, we, uh, we moved all the time, like every year practically. 
and uh, but cars, you know, they come with you. So um, yeah, I would get attached to vehicles because you keep the vehicle for, you know, 10, 15 years. So yeah, although I said, maybe I'd be attached to my house now. Uh, we've been here since 2006, so quite a while. I was, uh, I was pregnant with our son when we moved in. So, you know, he's had all his milestones in this house. First tooth, first steps, all that. So, yeah, now I'm settled enough that I wouldn't want to leave. But yeah, I would see like stories where, you know, developers wanted the land and they offer the people, you know, people don't want to move and they end up offering them like triple what the, you know, the place is worth and the people still just refuse to leave. And I'm like, you're going to offer me triple what my property's worth? I'm taking it. I'll be out tomorrow. No problem. <laughs> uh. But now that I've been here a while, yeah, I wouldn't really want to move again. I'm quite comfortable here. But yeah, if you're going to offer me that much money, I I'm pretty sure I I'd move. <laughs> mm. You know, buy another comparable place and keep the rest of the money for retirement. Yeah, the new neighbors said they're also from uh, BC. That's where we came from. Because uh, you just cannot buy. It's very hard to afford uh, buying a house in BC. The prices are just... I mean, everywhere is pretty bad, but there is, is worse than here. That's why there's quite a lot of people, actually, here in the prairies who came from from the West Coast because it's cheaper here. It's colder and everything, but yeah, you can actually afford to uh, buy a house here. Yeah, and they said it's it's nice too because like um in BC the shopping is more spread out a lot, so you would have to go to the next town for stuff a lot. And here it's uh yeah, you have almost everything you need here, so that's really nice. Mm. Yeah, they actually just finished building a brand new Canadian tire, which is a big thing to Canadians. <laughs> um Yeah, their grand opening is like in a couple of days, so yeah, I don't know what's going to go into the old Canadian Tire building, but yeah. Oh dear. So it's been taking me about 
three days to get a percentage, 1% done on this. So if I'm at 93%, there's 7% seven, seven left. So it's approximately three weeks, but we'll see. I mean, that sort of depends on a lot of factors. What else comes up in life and uh, how complicated the area I'm working on is too, of course, obviously. Some parts of the pattern go faster than others. A different shades of blue here and up close the details harder to see in this section I find I guess because it's kind of shadowy on the pattern but yeah when you back up then you can sort of see the the details pop out so time to uh, take this off the frame and show you the whole thing. So it'll be time for the monthly uh, update post. Oh my. See, I'm trying to remember, had I reached the, uh, the far edge at the beginning of this month or not? I think I hadn't, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with how far we are now. Because uh, this right here is line 270, and the center is right here, 275. So, of course, it's not completely halfway because of the bottom of the diagonal is not done because of the way it's shaped. But that, uh, yeah, I mean, that's still pretty impressive. And I'm thinking this go is going a bit faster. Um, because like I said, I usually was doing 60 rows. This is only 50. So yeah, we're really zooming across here. Oh, there goes the neighbor in his Corvette. <laughs> yeah, he'll be having to uh, store that away pretty soon. We're supposed to get snow. The forecast said the 7th of November and it's supposed to be below freezing. So that one will, will not melt least not right away so we'll see of course that's a ways out it'll often they give you a 14 day forecast but of course a lot of the times by the time you actually get there it's changed I've had times where it said it was going to rain and then that day it was sunny or it was supposed to be below freezing and it's above so yeah you never know okay so I think because of the way that this is, yeah, I'm going to do a few out of order. I'm going to, I'm going to break my guidelines here. So I'm going to do this one, this one, this one, just because the thread is on the right side going sort of all the, pulling it that far as a further carry. So I am going to just do these, even though they're out of order. Occasionally that happens. 
I'm not so strict that I can't do that, so. I don't do it very often, but. Yeah. Like I always say, I don't have any, many uh, major rules here. I just follow the colors, so sometimes Sometimes that means going outside. I call them guidelines, not rules. <laughs> yeah. So I think another one too. Yeah, let's just gonna do that because again, the thread is on this side and I don't feel like adding a second one when it's not very many stitches, so. And in fact, this thread is probably only long enough for these four that I have just highlighted, so. Oh, perhaps not. Okay, I'm just going to, before I complete this, I'm going to see, that's a short one, hmm, this one's not very long either though, um, okay, you know what I'm going to do, I'm going to park this one down here, tack it in place, because it's really only long enough for one more stitch, so I'll do it, park it right there. So that time where I had the, the hurting arms was because I, uh, I had, uh, I had started doing this where I was just skipping all over the place and not stopping to change colors. And then, yeah, I paid for that later. <laughs> My arms were absolutely killing me. So yeah, the stitching was going a bit faster, but it was not worth it put myself in pain so so even though I've done some out of order I'm still trying to sort of keep the stuff that I do around it in order so like I'm gonna park this here in this row below but I'm not gonna do those two stitches left I'm gonna do the ones above them first and then carry on from there so that's why That is why I chose to do it that way. So yeah, the colors I zeroed out were mostly bright pinks and purples because I was finishing up with the flowers, the last of those pink and purple flowers there. There's a couple more on the far right, so there's a few that still had like three stitches left, but they're far away, so unfortunately, I could not finish those off yet. But it will come, right? Eventually, there will be no stitches left to do at all. Okay, so this one is kind of on the edge, but because this is already threaded, already has a needle on it, I am going to complete it and then park it. Might as well. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, and the fifth one, yeah, okay. Yeah, even when I have parked wrong, 
it hasn't been bad enough that I haven't been able to figure it out, but I still want to avoid doing that when I can. <laughs> but just double checking with my grid lines. Now this thread is short, so we'll just end it off. It's too short to park. Just gonna look at what else I have part of this color. That helps me determine what I'm gonna do. Okay, that is decent length, as is that. Okay, so this one I'm gonna carry over to the right. So what I'm gonna do, <coughs> pardon me. Oh, for once I don't have any short threads. I've completely used up all my leftovers. So, time to pull a new one. Again, these two sort of up here are kind of borderline, but I'm gonna do them anyway so I can do that this one next to them that's already threaded. Sometimes I'll stop before the line, but sometimes I'll go past it. I just sort of play it by ear when I get there. <clears throat> Yeah, it was interesting actually. I was looking through my, uh, <coughs> pardon me, my Facebook memories. And uh, a couple of years ago, my kids' school had um, a dress as a meme day. So what we did was I, uh, we got some swimming goggles and we put, made them look like Kermit the Frog eyes. I put some, some uh, paper on them and colored in the centers the way Kermit's eyes are shaped. And then um, we gave him a plastic cup with a tea bag inside it. And then we wrote a note that we taped to the outside that said, but that's none of my business. And then he would pretend to drink the tea. So yeah, that was pretty fun. I can't, uh, I can't take credit for the idea. I was actually looking online because I couldn't think of anything. It was almost like, you know, where you have too much choice and it was like, well, which meme and how are we going to, uh, how are we going to uh, depict it, right? So, yeah. Okay, seven Okay, so after this, we'll have pretty much filled in around those ones I did out of order. It 
So yeah, it's totally up to you. If you want to be completely strict and never do stuff out of order, you know, go ahead. <laughs> I try to avoid it when possible, but when it's going to be more trouble than it's worth, I do not bother. I figured nobody's going to be looking at this with a magnifying glass. So they're, and I mean, really, it looks pretty similar. Like I say, it's slightly neater when I avoid closing stuff in, but not enough that I think you would really notice unless you were, you know, going over it with a microscope or something. Even I wouldn't be able to tell by the end, I think. And I should know where it is, so. There, so now filled in. So usually I like to work from sort of the right in to the left and back out, but sometimes be just because of the way the thread ends up, I end up going the opposite direction. And that's fine. So same thing, this thread is, that's why I chose to park this in the uh, the left edge of this beginning of this row instead of the right, because I knew I was going to want to do these three, have the thread end up back on the left side and carry on from there. So planned ahead a little bit. It kind of becomes second nature after a while when you've been doing this method for a while. going to look also at the next one down here to see what I want to do with it. Okay. So this longer one, I'm going to be the one that I jump around with a bit more than that shorter one lower down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and if I remember correctly, this one is, well, it's a little longer than I thought. So, just going to see with other threads what I plan to do. looking in the right place or not <laughs> no it's over here okay there we go yeah 390 okay all right um just trying to decide what i want to do where okay i think i'm going to join a new thread that's what i'm going to do might even have a medium sized piece we'll see no I do not okay that's all right Worst case scenario, if I ended up adding more threads than I needed, then I just end one off. Use the leftover pieces elsewhere, so. Oh man, so we're still watching um, the show Chuck on Prime, which is um, a guy who unwittingly becomes a CIA agent because he ends up basically getting a computer downloaded into his brain full of intelligence. Anyway, at some point, they had um, Linda Hamilton guest starred. And I'm like, how can you have little Linda Hamilton guest star and not make a single Terminator reference? Like, come on, not an I'll be back or anything. And she was also on Resident Alien, which is absolutely hilarious. And same thing, they haven't made any. It's like, come on. And they've made references to other, on Chuck, they've made references to other series, like especially Firefly, because... um. Adam Baldwin is on it, who was in Firefly. It's like he had one showing off his car, and, he, and they said, oh, that's shiny. He says, yeah, I know it's shiny, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, they've had other characters from, uh, from or other actors from that show be on there, too. And, yeah, so I said, I don't know why, but it just seems like such a missed opportunity to not have a, a Terminator reference. I mean... They've done it for uh, Schwarzenegger and other movies. Like they had one that was called The Sixth Day and he's like reconsidering something. And he says to the guy, I might be back. And the guy says, oh, you'll be back. <laughs> Which of course just made us laugh so hard. You know, should say should have said something like this transmission is terminated or something. That would be funny. Hmm. I actually did not see those movies when I was a kid. My parents considered them too violent, so I finally watched it as an adult, even though I was a kid of the eighties. <laughs> yeah, there was actually a lot of cultural stuff I missed out on, but uh well, it was like we started when we started watching Smallville. We got about halfway through, and my husband's like, "Have you seen the original movies?" And I'm like, "Well, no. I saw maybe parts of them when they were on TV, but I never really saw them." So he's like, "You know what? We need to watch them because there's a lot of references I know here that you're missing out on." So yeah, we did. And I kind of liked it when they ended the show, the very final scene. He, you know, rips open his shirt, and his suit is underneath, and runs into the camera so just the logo is the last thing you see and they were playing the original theme music from the movie so yeah and also they had a uh, christopher reeve showed up as a character he was a, a doctor on the uh on the show this was after he uh his accident but yeah i was really glad they found a way to uh 
to get him on the show, so that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say I agreed with a lot of people were talking about the depictions of Superman. I said, I think he did the best that you would find it believable that he that people did not guess he was Superman because of the way he carries himself two very different ways. And the fact that his suit is a little too big for him and like his, uh, his work suit, you know, like jacket and tie suit is a bit too big for him. So he's slouching a little bit and you can't really tell until he straightens up. And um, yeah, like I said, I think he pulled off that depiction really well that you could believe you wouldn't guess. And they said it's funny because... Um, What's his name? One of the other Supermans, uh, Henry Cavill, I think you say, or Cavill? Anyway, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But anyway, said that he actually stood under the, uh, the big poster promoting the movie Man of Steel in a Superman shirt and nobody recognized him. <laughs> um. Yeah, and like in the movies, Lois Lane only really starts to figure it out because they spend so much time together and she starts to notice that they're never in the same area together, right? He always, Clark always disappears when Superman shows up. Yeah, I think Superman's probably my favorite superhero because he's so pure and good, right? He does the right thing even, even when it costs him. Yeah, it was funny, too, because uh, Brandon Roth, who also played a version of Superman, they said he was meeting the, with a director and he was really nervous. So he dropped his coffee and spilled it on the table. And he thought, oh, gosh, you know, I have totally screwed up. I've lost the part right there. And actually, the director later said that was what sealed the deal for him, because that is totally something Clark would do, right? Be so nervous that he spills his coffee everywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. Yeah, and on Chuck, he was on it, and they they did make a reference at one time, said, oh, you know, he's like, you're like some kind of Superman, you know? And also, um, they had um, Kristen Carrick, I think her name is, who played uh, Lana on Smallville. So, yeah, it was nice. They, they played in different depictions of Superman, but they were both in Superman. So, yeah, they made a reference to it, which was fun. Yeah, I didn't know while I was watching Smallville that my sister got to be an extra in one of the episodes. She told me later. So I said, well, I have it on DVD. So the next time I watch it, I'm going to be, uh, I'll be looking out for you. Apparently she was, um, there's a fair and she's one of the uh, vendors. So I said, yeah, I'll have to be on the lookout for you. Yeah, it was funny, too, because there was a thread where people were saying, like, come on, a pair of glasses isn't going to hide who he is. And someone said, well, you never know. They said, I've been going to church with the same people for years. And then one day I got contacts and showed up and she said, like, six people came up and introduced themselves to her. It's like, I've been going to, you know, this with attending this church with you guys for years, but you didn't recognize me as soon as I, I changed uh, from glasses to contacts. Hmm. Yeah, and then there's, we've been watching the new CW show of, um, called, um, 
Superman and Lois, which is they have uh, twin boys now. Yeah, so I've been enjoying that. All right. Yeah, one thing I like about parking, you can really see your progress since there's no gap. So we started here and now we're down here. So yeah, got a nice little uh, chunk done, over 150 stitches this session. So um, anyway, as usual, thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.